Hello, I'm Atuba George, and I'm so glad to be bringing God's truth to you today. Praise God. Hey, can we call for that daily bread? Are you ready? Join me right now. Say, Father, I demand right now my daily bread. It's coming from you to me, and I receive it in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. We've been talking about the knowledge of God. Now, why is it important to know God? Jesus said, this is life eternal. That they might know thee, the only true God and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. Remember what Jesus said in John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. Okay? Now, that eternal life how do you get it? You know, people just think, I love, I believe in Jesus. Um, I confess Jesus as Lord of my life. I believe God um, raised him up from the dead in Jesus. And he says, now you are saved. Now you have received eternal life. No. No. When you come into him, something begins to take place. See, that's the mistake a lot of people make. You just think, oh, I've given my life to Christ. When did you give your life to Christ? So, so, so everything should start working for you. No, the reason things will be working for you is because you came into a system and you began to operate that system. That's the difference between the kingdom of God and the kingdom of this world. Get it right. That's why, you know, you understand that confessing, you know, say, I believe it, I confess it, then I have it. No, you don't understand the operation of these things. Eternal life functions by the knowledge of the Father and Jesus Christ. And guess what? And Jesus is the one who gives you that knowledge. John chapter 10. We're reading this all week. He says, verse, verse 27. He says, my sheep hear my voice and I know them. And they follow me. See, that following Remember what Jesus said, if you continue in my word, John chapter 8, then you are my disciples indeed, and you shall know the truth. I told you when I was teaching on that subject, I said, you don't discover the truth. The truth is revealed to you. How is the truth revealed to you? Truth himself. Jesus said, I am the truth. Truth reveals truth to you. Now you get it. So when truth is revealed to you, that is eternal life that you have received. And when you receive that eternal life, you begin to walk in it. Now, this is the beauty of our life. So it's not just something that, no, this is a process. This is a system. This is how the kingdom of God functions. It is operated by words. Whose words? The words of God. It is his word coming to us. And we receiving it, believing it, and walking by it. That we, and the result we see is the manifestation of eternal life. That's how this thing works. You see, everything Jesus came to do, you know, let me show you something in John chapter 14. You remember Jesus was with the disciples and and teaching them. I love John chapter 14. It'll take time to read the whole chapter. And while he was talking to them, Philip said something. Verse 8, John chapter 14 and verse 8. Philip said unto him, Lord, show us the Father and it's sufficient us. No, no, show us the Father. No, we've been with you for so long. Just show us the Father. Because you always talk about the Father, the Father, my Father, my Father, the Father, the Father. The Father. See? And so he's always wondered. And he just said, show us the Father. Look at the response Jesus gave to him. Jesus said unto him, have I been so long with you, and yet hast thou not known me, Philip? Hold on. Philip said, show us the Father. And Jesus said, how come I've been so long with you, and you have not known me? No, Philip didn't say, Show me you. He said, show me the Father. You remember what I talked to you about? Who the Father is, who the Son, who the Word is, and who the Holy Spirit is, okay? Now, he says, have I been so long with you and you have not known me? He that hath seen me has seen the Father. 
And now says, then thou show us the Father. What's Jesus saying here? There is nothing else to see. He that have seen me have seen the Father. I told you, Jesus or the Word of God is the only part of the Godhead that is seeable. So the day Melchizedek met Abraham, Abraham saw the Father. Yes. The day um, Abraham, okay, Abraham had several encounters. Joshua met him. You remember when he met the, the one with his sword drawn. He said, are you for us or for adversary? He says, as the captain of the Lord's house, I am come. And Joshua said, oh, okay, so what do we do? You remember that story. That that was the manifestation of the word of God. That was not an angel. That was the word of God made flesh. See? So when Jesus said to Philip, anyone who have seen me have seen the Father. Take note of that. He who has seen me has seen the Father. Trust me, there is nothing else to see. If you are still waiting that one day, oh, we are going to see the Father. No, sorry, you will not. And then secondly, if you are thinking that the painting that you have of Jesus or the movie that you've seen of Jesus, Jesus is going to be like that. Sorry, sir. Now, that's why you've, you must have heard me make this statement before. That even when you go into heaven today, you are not going to see one who say, oh, I want to see, I want to see Jesus. And I say, oh, let me take you to the throne. And then you now go to the throne. And I see one big chair. And I see the one chair on the right hand. And you see Jesus sitting on the right hand. No, sir. No. But you see, Jesus uh, the word of God will always manifest. And whenever he manifests, he manifests as a man. Thank you, Lord Jesus. <laughs> the knowledge of this itself opens you up to life eternal. Why? Because the one you're trying to know, the one who, who's revealing himself is the eternal one. Yet, he can be like a man. I tell people this. I say, listen, Jesus can so easily appear to you today. And most of you, he has even appeared to you and you didn't know he was the one. Oh, yes. You see, you have this mentality that when he, when he shows up, everywhere is going to be full of glory. You know, if Jesus is coming to my room, the walls are going to be vibrating. They want, no, no. Now, the Holy Spirit can do all those things. You see, those are just effects he does. Praise God. Yes. But, but truly speaking, it, it somehow influences or, or what influences that kind of action is your perception of him. The more you grow matured in your knowledge of him, the more you grow in your understanding of him, the more simpler he becomes to you. What I mean simpler? He doesn't do so much effects. But then even in that, there are times he want to manifest himself to you. You see, now, you know, I just spoke about Joshua. Now, Joshua saw a, a soldier, and he, he saw one who stood with his sword drawn, okay? So he saw a captain. He saw a soldier. Now, Melchizedek saw, um, Abraham saw a priest, and a king in Melchizedek. Are you getting that? Now, why was he called a priest and a king? Now, how do we explain him to you? Praise <laughs> God. He's such amazing. The glory of him. <sighs> See, when you meet him and you're trying to describe him to people, people, your words will be too... People will just think you're, 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 you're making a fool of yourself. How do you describe something that is indescribable? See, he can show up as a man. Now, that's what happened in the case of Melchizedek. So, you know, I've, I've heard people say he was an earthly king. He was never an earthly king. I've explained that in previous broadcasts. He was never an earthly king. Abraham met this man and then 
there is this mentality of people thinking, hey, I think he's a king. No, he's look, he looks like a king. He looks like the king of Salem. Oh, he's, 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 he's a priest. He, he's, just, he's just like a priest. Now, it was the book of Hebrews that now gave us the understanding of who this man was. Because so, there was that argument that he must have been an earthly king. But the problem now with him being an earthly king is that they could not trace his genealogy. If he was an earthly king, at least you would say after so -so person died, he now became king. But they couldn't trace that. Okay, he was an earthly king. When? They couldn't tell. Where exactly? They couldn't tell. So who did he hand over to? They couldn't tell. When did he die? They couldn't tell. Okay, when was he born? They couldn't tell. So there was that mystery about him. Until, it's the same thing like Jesus. Now, Jesus' own is even simpler for them to argue. Now, because they, they saw that his mom, Mary, gave birth to him. Yet we all know he existed before her. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? But she gave birth to him and then he grew in a certain village. So they knew him. They saw him grow up. And then him coming back now to say, I'm the Messiah. I mean, who, who, who dash you, Messiah? I really get out of this place. We know you. We know your mother. We know your brothers. We know your sisters. How come you're not coming to tell us what we don't understand? Please, please, please. Now it's the same thing. Jesus can show up today and you will think that he's the mechanic or you will think that, oh, he's, he can show up in any form. And he's showing up. <sighs> you remember when Jesus said in the book of Matthew, he said, I would separate the sheep and the goats, okay? Then he says, I will say unto those on the right hand, enter into the rest that was prepared for you. Then he said, because I was hungry and you gave me food. I was naked and you gave me clothes. I was ill. And then they will not ask, like, when did we see you hungry? He said, when you did it to one of the least of these, my brethren, you did it to me. Now, many of us have thought, I used to think that way also, Many of us have taught that, okay, when you do something for other Christians, you know, that's what he meant. So he was encouraging you to be generous to believers and, and all that. We, we all, I always thought so too. Until the Lord corrected me and said, no, that's not what I mean. I will come. And you remember, I told you sometime back that he was, he was referring to the tithes. Yes. Yes, yes. Praise <laughs> God. That's another this talk. That's not what we're talking about today. But he, says, he will come. He will come. And when he comes, he will come like one of the brethren. The same way you remember the Mary saw him and thought he was the gardener. Okay. And and the disciples going to on their way to Emmaus thought he was just one stranger, you know, that was traveling. See. The disciples, when they went back fishing, he came and, and said, children, do you have any meat? They didn't know he was the one at first until John said to Peter, that's the Lord. See? Now, he shows up in different forms. And then anytime he shows up, he would, he, he can just simply show up like one in need. At that time, what is he coming for? He's coming for his money, the tithes. Yeah. Today, you know, people say, ah, there's no tithe in the New Testament. Jesus is busy receiving tithe today. He is. He is. So on that day, he would say it. When you give it to one of these fellows, one of these, my brethren. Now, he was actually referring to himself. That's, that's really another big stuff. He was referring to himself. That he's going to show up as one who is naked and he expects you to clothe him. Clothe him with what? With his money. He's going to show up as one who is hungry and he expects you to feed him. 
And that's why I told you, if you don't know his voice, when you see him, you will not know. That's why you must exercise yourself in knowing and understanding his voice. Practice hearing his voice. Now imagine Abraham just saw these three men passing by. He knew instantly that, that these were not normal. It doesn't mean Abraham will see everybody passing by. He will invite them to come and eat. No. The Bible didn't say they came to his house. The Bible said they, they were passing by. See, they were just walking and then abraham saw them like hey sorry you guys um i don't know where you're coming from but i i, I perceive your time now because there was something that connected him to them there was something he must have heard there, there must have been something that made him feel these are not normal let me already he was a good man you understand what i'm saying he was a good man and that's why i tell people you know that's why you don't um, you don't stop people from doing good. You don't stop people from tithing, okay? Now, because when you're practicing tithing, you're already in the practice of tithing. Now, I always tell people, just do the perfect thing. Now, add the voice of God to it. Then you'll be made for. See, then uh, he, he would now say this. He'll come. And when he comes, make a demand of you. And then you will hear his voice like, I don't know. There was just something about that voice. There was just something about this person. Let me obey. Let me give. Listen, you may be giving all the time, but it takes one giving to change everything. That's the truth. You might be tightening all the time. It takes one tight to change everything. You remember the fellow who kept his donkey. I don't think that's the first time he was keeping his donkey there. And I told you that was his tight. But that particular day, that particular donkey he kept was the exact one Jesus needed to go into Jerusalem. So that day, that man fulfilled the word of God. It's exactly the same way we fulfill the word of God as we go on. So keep that's why God said, don't be weary in well doing. Don't get tired. Don't get tired. Because when you're doing that, you will just meet Jesus. And when you meet him, what does he give to you? Now, because you're a follower of Jesus, says, I give to them eternal life. I give to them eternal life. And you shall know the truth. And the truth shall make you free. That's all what all these things are about. You see, what differentiates you from the one who's not saved is eternal life. And what does eternal life mean? It's not that when you die, you go to heaven. It means you're living with a different set of principles in this life. Everybody may be good, but your own view is different because you're building according to the pattern of life. That's what eternal life goes to God's grace. But my time is up. Listen, God. This this series, God is doing something that you are sensing. And as you pay attention to his word, pay attention to his voice, there is a transformation that will begin to take place. Even right now, I'm seeing someone with a lump. The lump is disappearing right now. Somewhere around your back. There's a lump somewhere around your back. Can you put your hand and, and touch that place right now? I rebuke this love and I command it to go from your body now. In Jesus' name. Amen. It's dissolving right now. You are free. You are free in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow.